Hello and welcome to this video. In the next few minutes, I'm going to take you through the process of configuring a WordPress environment, that's a WordPress content management system, on the Google Cloud Platform using the App Engine service. My name is Shian Nafti. I'm an authorized trainer for Google, and I basically spend most of my time traveling around the world, delivering training to Google's clients and partners. So let's get right in. The first thing we're going to do is make sure we have access to the APIs that are required in order for us to be able to provision the database services that we need, as well as the platform or the compute engine service for running the WordPress application, which is App Engine. To do that, let's start off by making sure we're working against the right project. The next thing we're going to do is make sure we have access to the right services on the Google Cloud that are required. That's App Engine as well as Cloud SQL. Okay, so at this stage, um, we have the APIs enabled. The next thing we're going to do, which is step number two, we're going to begin the process of configuring the Cloud SQL instances, which we require, as well as the database, and ensure that we have a user we can use to access the database. To configure the Cloud SQL instance, we're going to use the G Cloud SQL instances create command. You can see here that we're specifying the project ID as the name of the instance, making it unique. And we're also selecting the smallest tier of instance. That's the DBF1 micro tier. And we're enabling the activation um, policy of always. And the region for the instance will be in Iowa. That's US Central 1. The database instance has been created. We have the right version, MySQL 5.7. It's located in the US Central One zone, and it's of the right tier, and also we have an endpoint as the primary IP address, which is the IP address for accessing the database externally. So let's move on to the next step. The next step is to create a database within this instance. We specify the name of the database, minus minus instance, and the instance where this database will be created. So let's go ahead and create the database. So now the database is created. And the final step is we're going to set a password for an existing user that's currently available, which is the root user. Of course, we could have created a totally new user, but in the interest of time, decided to simply set the password and use the root user moving forward. So let's go ahead and set the password for the root user. Okay, so the password has been set. Now to confirm these activities, I'm going to take you through the, um, to the console. So let's go to the user, the UI, that's the Google Cloud console. And we're going to select SQL under the storage section. Yeah, we can see, I'm going to hide this info panel. So I'll click on this button to hide this. You can see here the instance that was created, the type, the endpoint, that's a public IP address that we can use to access databases within that instance. And you can see here the specific connection name, right, for the instance. So let's click on the instance itself. This takes us to this overview pane where we have access to some dashboard and some interesting information, service accounts, etc. cetera. Um, we have also this connection page, the database is exposed externally via a public IP address. We can also view users. You may recall we set the password for the root user. So here is the root user. The root user can connect from any host in terms of databases, you may recall we created a database. That's a database there, WordPress-MySQL-DB. And it's a database of the type user. So we do have everything we need to proceed to the next step. I'm just going to go back to the, the home page for Cloud SQL, and we can get back to our console. The next step is step number three. Let's go ahead and select that option. We have a directory on the Cloud Shell file system where we're going to perform uh, most of the activities relating to configuring the WordPress application as well as the configuration files. 
Having changed into that directory, we're going to download a number of tools. So these are Google Cloud tools packages that are required for the deployment of WordPress into App Engine. So let's go ahead and download these tools. Let me make this a little bit smaller because I think we're missing the command at the bottom. So having downloaded the tools, the next thing we're going to do is make sure that we have PHP installed on the local file system. So here we're using the sudo apt get install command to install PHP 7.2. Okay, so now we have PHP installed. We can then proceed to the next step, which is to use the PHP version we have just installed to run the WP-GAE script. This is a script provided to us by Google to enable us to be able to configure a set of WordPress application code as well as configuration files for use within App Engine. So what have we got here? Part of the configuration was specifying the project ID. That's a project where this WordPress application will be deployed into. The database region, the region where the database is running. The database instance, the database name, the user, as well as the password that will be used to access the database. And we're also specifying the subdirectory where the application code and configuration files will be will be located so let's go ahead and run this in a non-interactive mode so now we have the code available within that subdirectory i can actually confirm that that's the case so if i go to the editor you can see here these are the wordpress application code files or the php files as well as the configuration file Let's go back to our console. The next step is step number four, and this is where we're going to deploy the application into Google App Engine. So let's go ahead and get that process started. First thing we will do is make sure we are in the project directory where the application code as well as the configuration files currently reside. So we're just changing into that directory. The next thing we will do is run this gcloud command deploy. So gcloud app deploy, and we're making use of the app.yama file as well as the cron.yama file. Let's have a quick look at those two files. So once more, I'm going to go to the editor. You can see here, this is the app.yama file. And the entry point for the app.yama file is a script provided to us by Google. So this is Google App Engine app.php. You can see the runtime is PHP 7.2. That's what we installed previously. And in the cron.yama file, we have here a, an endpoint or a URL endpoint which is executed every 15 minutes. So that's it in terms of the configuration file. So let's go ahead and run this. So once this is executed, we will essentially deploy the content of the target project directory into Google App Engine. But before we do that, we need to select the region for the App Engine application. So let's select US Central, which is the same region where we created our database instance. Once the App Engine application has been created in the US Central region, we are prompted to confirm that we want to continue. So let's go ahead and say yes to that. All of the files that were in the target project directory, numbering 2,478, are going to be transferred into a cloud storage bucket. And that's where the application will be served from. So the upload is complete. And now we're updating 
the service that's the default service that will be used to access the WordPress application. Once the service is updated, we define some traffic splitting rules for the service. In this instance, we have just one version of the service, so 100% of the traffic will be forwarded to this version, which we've just deployed. The endpoint for the service is displayed. The URL is essentially the project ID dot appspot.com. You can also see that the cron jobs based on the cron.yama file is also updated. And now we have a running application. We can verify that the application is indeed up and running from the console. So let's go ahead to App Engine on the console. Going to take a look at the dashboard. You can see here the dashboard. There isn't any data yet because we haven't accessed the application, but the URL, that's the endpoint for the application, is displayed here. We can also go to the Services tab, and within Services, we can also see the default service. There are access to some tools, so if you wanted to view the source, we can select Source, and that will take us to the code which was downloaded into the target projects directory. So you can see here, this is the application code. So there we have the app.yama file, as well as the cron.yama file, which we had a look at previously. Let's go back to the app engine. So let's have a look at versions. And currently we have just one version, and you can see 100% of the traffic is being directed to the one version. Now, if we had multiple versions, we could then configure traffic splitting. So let's go back to the dashboard and click on this link in order to access the WordPress application. So there you go. Now we have access to the configuration for WordPress and we can now go ahead and configure our WordPress website. Thanks for watching.